Matt. We're rolling, Matt. All right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we call this uh, February 2018 meeting of the Boston Allowance County Zoning Board of Appeals to order. Um, as Tracy said, everyone in attendance, please make sure and sign on the attendance sheet in the back of the room. Um, before we begin the meeting, I'll explain the process for the meeting. Uh, we will call each case by the case name and case number. The city or county representing staff will come to the lectern and present the facts of the case. After presentation, the board may or may not ask staff questions. Once the board has heard the case and asked all questions necessary of the staff, we will move to hearing from either the applicant or their representation. After hearing from the applicant, we will hear from anyone else who wishes, wishes to express support for the case. Finally, we will hear from anyone who wishes to express opposition to the case. Anyone addressing the board will please come to the lectern and give their name and address for the record. For clarity, please, res and respect, we ask that only the person at the lectern address the board and the audience give them an un uninterrupted chance to be heard. If there is important information that you feel we need to consider, then please come to the lectern when it is your turn and when you are called. In the interest of time, the board asks that you keep your comments brief and to the point. Please do not come to the lectern only to restate the same information we have already been given by someone else. Once the board has had a chance to hear from all sides on the matter and ask any questions we feel are necessary, then we will render a decision. If we do not feel that the necessary information is available to render a decision today, then we may decide to table the case for the next meeting. Please be aware that this board is here today only to address various applications to the zoning codes for the Lowndes County and the City of Alasta. This is the only matter on which the board has been given power to render a decision. We cannot and do not have the power to address any other matters that are not covered by the zoning codes of Lowndes County or the City of Alasta. Now, uh, I will call the first case, uh, application 2018-01, Joshua Stevens, 3018 Wendover Road. Tracy? And um, I'll hand it over to Gretchen, who will share that case. Thank you. This particular, can y'all hear me? Can we go to the lectern? Um, accessory structure. 
is also about 14 and a half feet from the garage, which is attached to the house. He's required by LDR to be at least 15 feet from the principal structure. So we're considering four variances. Distance from two property lines, so that's two variances. Distance from the accessory structure and distance from the principal structure, made the house. Four variances, staff did review the request, and unfortunately it was not a hardship. So we recommend the denial of all four. Any questions? Anybody have any questions for Tracy? I do. Okay. Um, so if this is denied, then the structure's gonna have to be removed. Removed from the property or moved to where it needs to be. And it is consistent with accessory structure. And can it physically be put where it leads off the setbacks? That is a, is a potential. Um, I'd like to see like a quick and dirty site plan <coughs> to, to make sure the forking is. It is a potential in this quarter right here. But again, I'd like to see a site plan. Could it be moved to where some, but not all of the setbacks were met, and that would satisfy or that is That is a possibility as well. Again, I'd like to see a site plan for dimensions to know what he can meet and what he can meet. Would they have to come back before us or wait a year? If it's denied, he has to wait a year. But if it's postponed? Yes. Then they can. He can, he can go out and look at his lot, do a quick and dirty site plan, come back and say, Tracy, I, I, I can't get any of that. Or it's a potential for me to leave this one, but not this one. And the structure is totally complete at this point. Almost. Um, going back, if you look right here, and I know it's hard to tell, he was putting like Siding slats, for lack of a better word, up the frame. There are a few slats slacking on this part of the frame, and then a few slats slacking back. So it's all, almost totally It's not quite that. It's hard for me to tell from this angle, but on the interior, uh -huh. has he gone beyond where the concrete, original concrete pad was to begin with? I don't believe so. So uh, that whole interior is concrete. Yes, yes, we But the applicant can confirm. Any other questions? All right. Is there anyone here uh, who would like to speak in favor of this set of um, various applications? Please come to the lectern and give your name and address.
What was the name of the contractor? Yeah. It was supposedly Keen's Building Supplies where I purchased it. Okay. And was, was this prefabricated or built on site? I believe it was prefabricated. Is it a symbol on site? I don't know. But they, he, he asked me how big, and I told him how big the concrete was, and then they showed up and instructed his size. I don't know how much of it had to be prefabricated. What was his response when you told him that you were being, being brought up in front of his board? South Sanitation, 205 Tucker Road.
yours is the third of three applications that are submitted by the applicant for the property. Um, property out at the address of Tucker Road, you see all the maps where it is located. Currently, it's on the ER. Um, there's a long story to that, which I think is explaining your fact as to how the ER zoning came to be and why it's still there. The property owner, which is for all of that ER property, which is almost 11 acres in size, is currently in the process to rezone it from ER to M2. The applicant, which is a tenant on the property for the southern half, um, is in the process for a conditional use permit for a solid waste hauling operation and an assessment transfer station, and also the application design for appeals for certain variances from supplemental standards for the transfer station. Zoning and conditional use for different applications. They're going to City Council on Thursday of this week. We to the planning commission and then the merits is a report. Um, so there's no issue on the table here regarding zoning property or regarding the conditional use approval of those two uses, but simply the supplemental standards. And those are listed there in your packet. There are 17 of them. Um, some background here on the property. You see the aerial? This is from 10 years ago. Um, the history starts back in the 1950s when it was Miller Concrete Pipe Company. Um, that predates Pines County's adoption of zoning. Um, for whatever reason, back when the county adopted zoning, this was the agricultural zoning. When we got uh, annexed into the city as part of the island's annexation 11 and a half years ago, it was given an ER, so that's how the zoning site plan that's in your packet looks like this. This is a zoom in on an existing survey of the whole property. We just highlighted the southern half. You see their existing building, um, the existing truck dock or truck well is what I call it, and then an area where there's some yard debris that gets piled. Sometimes when you're talking about what a facility is, sometimes it's easier to start with what it is not. The supplemental standards that are in the LDR written for a typical transfer station. What you have before you is not typical. Um, transfer stations elsewhere tend to be very large. Um, they bring in solid waste from a variety of followers, a variety of sources. It's consolidated inside a large building and then sent to landfills. Um, there are none in this area. Um, I did some research. Um, there are five that I could find in Georgia. They're all up outside of the Atlanta area. The closest one is actually in Tallahassee. Um, the picture sort of looks like a fairly new but large facility. According to the website, Tallahassee hauls all of their garbage that's collected there to Jackson County, Florida, which is quite a distance to the west. So that's the closest one. But some pictures, just some examples. Uh, typically, it's inside a large building. The garbage trucks go in and load their load into the building. Um, there are front end loaders and some other equipment in there that moves it around with piles and picks it up. As you can see, they tend to be kind of large facilities. In my mind, I think of them as the indoor landfill. Um, this is a large one. This is one in San Francisco. And that's a very, very large building. And obviously, a facility like that has some different impacts and certainly some need for some rules to keep them under control. Uh, the buildings can be quite large. This is one in Rockford, Illinois. If you look closely, you see a police car and a fire truck in the foreground, and a little bit of smoke coming out of the building. I think this picture was taken because of the fire, um, which you can imagine what a fire has in one of these large facilities might be. The applicant, on the other hand, has different property. This is the view from Hill Harbor and Ocean Boulevard. It's a few hundred feet to the north. And then there is a driveway that comes from the southern property back up to Tucker Road. Used to be in the primary access when the pipe was there, and it is not paved, but it is like pressure run gravel that has been compacted over decades. Um, when you get inside the property, this is the actual transfer facility. Um, it's already been reviewed and approved by Georgia EPD. A copy of that permit is in the packet. It is simply a truck well for the purposes of transferring solid waste from smaller garbage trucks into a larger garbage truck trailer. Had plan under the state rules, they had no way else to classify it except as a transfer station. Um, what the staff is reviewing it is accessory <coughs> to the primary use of the property, which is solid waste hauling operation. So 
this is the transfer facility that we're talking about. And because the state classified it as a transfer facility and issued a permit for such, we're treating it under the same rules as the it's always transfer facility under the LDR, all the supplemental standards. Even though it's a little bit different than what you did. Uh, currently, it has a roof over it, it's a truck well. Um, the applicant has been in conversation with the EPD. You see the letter that came this afternoon, my email. Um, and I have seen the proposed plans applicant is wanting to submit later this week for a building shelter to go over that. Uh, one of the requirements is any uh, leaf shape or liquid that comes out of the garbage truck that's in the well that collects inside has to be pumped out. He has a sump pump there. You see the holding tank there on the left. I think there's two tanks there. Um, and pumps it out. And apparently there's not a whole lot of liquid that comes out of the truck. But if you can imagine if we get a four inch rainfall, the amount of water that would go into this well. And because it's in there or other other liquids might be, all of it would have to be pumped out and it's sent off to a treatment facility and properly disposed of. So now we got to even his own interest to realize, protect himself from other nature to cover the well. But this is removed from the building. If you stand at the well and look to the east, you see the existing building, which functions really as just a big garage for his trucks to park in at night. And off to the left of there, you see a small office. Um, and some empty dumpsters that are there for outdoor storage. Um, all that is a permitted use and into zoning. So if the rezoning is approved and if the conditional use is approved, the use is there, all that remains is the supplemental standards for all of those transfer sections. Um, they're in your packet. And if you go through those kind of quickly, as you see, he's already demonstrated compliance with most of them, uh, with the exception of number four. The property should be located at least 500 feet from the nearest property line to a residential zone. If you go back to the building map and attack it, you look down here, this is all property owned by the Lowndes County. It's the recycling center and the animal shelter. That's agricultural zone. This is residential zone. And he's within 500 feet of residential zone. Even though the use on that property is not residential, it's actually industrial. Because it's owned by Lowndes County, the use and the zoning don't matter. It's exempt. But because of that distance, that's why the variance to number four. And you see there the distance is 285 feet away. It's a little bit more than half of feet away. Number five is a minimum 100 foot wide landscape buffer, which there is room on the property to do that. But staff's question is why, and it's an industrial use, primarily a trucking operation. It's surrounded by industrial property. It's a distance off of the nearest used public street. So he is requesting an exemption from that. But we'd like to leave the existing tree line that's there, which partially obscures the property anyway. So that's his proposal there. Number six, all facilities shall be enclosed with a solid security fence at least six or eight feet in height. Parallel to all property elements and place on the interior side. Again, security pads for what would normally be a large solid waste transfer facility. Regular industrial uses surrounded by industrial zoning that do not have a buffer yard requirement. Fencing is optional. In the staff's view, this is more like a typical industrial use. So the fencing should be optional. There is some fencing already there, just not eight feet everywhere and not solid. Number seven, processing equipment materials away shall be strictly confined to the interior of the transfer station building. Again, this is not a typical transfer station house in the building. Um, but his facility is a truck to truck transfer well. He plans to put an enclosure over it. Number nine, all runoff or wash water and soil water shall be discharged to an on site wastewater treatment system approved by the city. Um, again, not a typical transfer station. He is required by EPD to see all the rules and requirements that are on the permit. The wastewater that is accumulated in the transfer facility has to be um, pumped out and treated properly. He just outsources that rather right? than build a treatment facility on site for what is otherwise a very small amount of liquid. It is much more economical to ship it off site right? and properly dispose of. Uh, but if you can imagine these very larger transport facilities that have an acre or more of a roof of a concrete floor that has to be cleaned, that generates a lot more water, therefore treated on the same. And then finally, number 12 is all parking and fueling of vehicles shall be 
paid for the on site in addition to the parking requirements of the tractor. The minimum of five spaces for the dealer and the vehicles contained, waste materials shall be provided. And again, this is written for the larger stations which have you know, 100 or more trucks a day coming in and they stack up. Um, the aerial of the one in Tallahassee, for example, is a very long driveway, multiple lanes leading into the building, um, isolated. This is with the conditions. For him only with his own fleet of five uh, trucks currently. Um, no need to have a key for just a few vehicles, particularly when he is a good distance off the road. Um, based on all that discussion, the staff is recommending approval with several conditions. Um, the purpose of the conditions is to ensure that he stays the smaller existing operation that he is now, truck to truck transfer is solid waste only, and that he does not become or evolve into one of these larger facilities. Um, if he wants to do that, the process is available. It's the same public hearing process. We would need to resubmit a new application for conditional use approval um, and potentially for these same variances. Um, if we'd like, I can go through the conditions individually. Um, if you all heard enough of me talk, It's not required by the code to put a buffer for the brick for your zoning code because it's industrial next to industrial. Uh -huh. um, only thing is in these supplemental standards that is geared toward the facility. But yeah, this is his closest distance, 200 feet off. Huh. Um, what he's proposing is to leave it as is with the fencing and the tree line and the landscaping that is currently there. Which, I mean, you can see on the industrial. Look carefully. What you're looking at is the building, the warehouse building, the truck transfer station back behind here on the northern end of his property, which is even 300 feet further away. Can we talk about large um, operations and small? Like he has five trucks. Right. Is there a, what is the separation from a large and a small? I mean, what, where does the large start? How many yeah. trucks? It becomes a discretionary thing. Um, if he goes outside any conditions of approval that we place on it, then that triggers a re-review. It may also trigger a development of regional impact if he were to become your typical solid waste transfer station. There's commentary in packet about how the DRI was submitted, because under the state rules, transfer stations trigger that review process. It was submitted to the state. They found that it was not a DRI, mainly because of the scope and nature of operation. There was no solid waste being deposited there. Um, they said they went truck to truck, and it was a small operation, not your typical transfer station. If that were to change, then that whole DRI question opens up again. So basically, when you're transferring from truck to truck, that solid waste is never hitting the ground. Is that what you're saying? Correct. The way it works, an applicant can explain this side, not to see the vehicles. The tractor trailer backs into the swell, so the back of it is level with this concrete pad. Mm -hmm. The trailer is a specially designed one, has hydraulics and so forth, and the back of it opens up sort of like an Indian, is the way I would describe it. Um, the garbage truck literally backs into the trailer and unloads its waste and then pulls out. Um, a pole that the trailer will hold the equivalent of three full garbage trucks. And then once it's full, the trailer closes up and the trailer tractor trailer goes to the landfill. Um, he is hauling the solid waste not to other into lane, he's hauling it to Thomasville a little bit of the distance further. So rather than running into the, the garbage trucks on individual trips to Thomasville and that, he consolidates with the transfer facility takes the one larger truck once a day and comes back. And then comes back and then parks it. So from 
unless this committee put a limit, like he could he could double and have ten trucks. Right. And in, in the pack by essentially the commission used the recommendation there is to limit to ten garbage trucks and only one truck well. Or truck. Um, if that were to go from one tractor trailer to two per day, staff is fine with that. It's still a small operation. So what would you cut off in this day? Um, ten trucks and one truck well. The ten trucks conceivably could have them if all ten were full every day. That's three large truck loads. And I understand that these individual trucks are not always full, so it may take you know, four or five of them to fill the trailer. That is still magnitudes smaller than these other facilities. I have a question. Um, so there are trucks haulers in our area and if I understand what you said correctly they all just take their garbage truck that picks up on the street and then goes to directly to the landfill here in town. Correct. There is no other not that I'm aware of. I don't think any others go outside of Lowndes County to deposit their waste but there there might be. Okay. Um, Driving through his yard, no. where they're handling waste. 
will be coming in through that gate. From Tucker Road. From Tucker, Tucker Road. Tucker Road. Tucker Road. Okay. Unless he wants to give permission to come through his area. Right. I mean, that's between him and then the landlord. Okay. Uh, this gate right here is right here. Okay. And that's looking into the property. And so that gravel that's packed down really hard, that's what you're seeing here. Okay, so the, the drive that I drove in today is coming across city property. County, county property, property, I'm sorry. County, the county, right there, yes. And, and they have an agreement. He has established for Lowndes County to use that. But he ties into their paved driveway on the hill park. Okay. There was some discussion amongst city staff as to whether that was really a good idea or not, or should we mandate that we instead use Tucker Road as the access. And the thinking was, got permission to go across, you know, even if you got permission from another adjacent owner. But the engineering department's preference is that these heavy trucks are better suited to use Gil Harbin to get into the site than Hyper Road. Um, so we're fine. As long as the county maintains the permission, you can do that. If something were to happen to that agreement and you can't, you know, go across county property, he's got another way out. Okay. To get the Tucker Road, if that becomes necessary. So everything here, except for the, the loading well, was already existing on the site, right? Yes. They created the loading well. Um, and because Georgia EPD classified the loading well as a transfer facility because they did not know how else to classify, right. that triggered y'all having to classify as a transfer facility which is now the reason that it's coming before us. Correct. Otherwise, it would have been considered an accessory structure and it would not have come before us had Georgia EPD not classified it the way they did. Correct. It was really out of abundance of caution. And in my conversation directly with the EPD officials, um, it, they were not classified that way, did not need a permit for it. And the temptation would be there that these standards were really great for the big facilities like what he's doing. Uh, we could control the size of his operation through the conditional use, and all this variant stuff would be unnecessary. But because the state classified and permitted him as a transport facility, I thought it best to go through the process and address these variances at the same time that the conditional use is coming through. Um, to your knowledge, beyond the initial permanent application and approval by Georgia EPD, Will they be inspecting him on a yearly basis or a regular basis? On a regular basis, I don't know their timetable. Okay. But he is subject to their permit review and inspection. I think there was one recently, which is in the email. Right. Um, as we raise some more questions about the truck well. Right. Is it sufficient for it to be open like that? Um, I think George E.D. had to think about it because it's not something they have seen much before. Um, and they decided that it really ought to be covered. And as you can imagine, in his own interest, he needs to keep the rainwater out. Well, you're during dry weather, you don't notice it much, but you know, when we get our monsoons, that truck well is going to fill up, and that's an awful lot of water to have to dispose of unnecessarily. It's just that the, in the conditions that y'all recommend, part of the conditions are that he stay, he stay compliant with the applicable Georgia EPD permit requirements. I just want to make sure that that y'all aren't going to be inspecting him for that, that, that Georgia EPD would potentially be inspecting him for that, that would then cause a flag, they will that be, could then trigger y'all to fly. They will be the inspector and the enforcer of that. Uh, we have this here, so we have some local control that if we see something that looks um, incorrect, then we will contact the EPD to see what they determine as a government authority for. Okay. Um, so that's really big for both. Um, can you explain condition number four about additional paving access? I'm not understanding that. Yeah, it's um, <clears throat> in city engineer I, and I had a very good conversation about it yesterday. We visited the site. The staff had already been there. I want to make sure Pat Collins also got to see the site. So I expect a lot of questions this week from city council. In the M2 zoning, the requirement for paving is not so critical the nature of yard storage and manufacturing and trucks, which that's what he's proposing to operate in, which is in two zones. So there's a general exemption that's there, 
But the concern is if there's too much truck traffic in one area, even an unpaved site can be raided. And the engineer's biggest concern was whether or not dirt or other debris is tracked out onto the public road. That's the greatest concern. So even in a lot of our M2 sites, all of that unpaved portion is in the back and not right up on top of the road. There are a few exceptions, but they have to go back. So there's ways to mitigate that too. So a little bit of pavement or some gravel or things of that nature. Um, so the engineer is very interested in it. What he observed is there's been truck driving in and out of here already, and there is no evidence of it tracking out to go hard. Uh, probably because of the distance to get from the site to the County driveway to go hard. Uh, but this condition is in here on purpose. That's how the conditions are now. If at a later time there becomes a problem of subtracting out on the public street, then the city engineer has recourse to enforce the requirement for pavement or some other mitigation measure. What would he have to do to comply with the on-site wastewater treatment? What would that involve? He would have to build his own treatment facility. He would have to be reviewed and approved by EPD, et cetera, just as any other treatment facility would be. And I can't imagine the design of it. Um, I guess it would be rather expensive and not treat a whole lot of water, unless he doesn't put a roof over it, and then he's going to be treating a lot of rainwater. That dilutes whatever is actually in the well. But that would be the requirement. And even if we approve the variance to our local requirement and the EPD changes their mind or decides it's a problem, as part of their permit, they could require it. So a lot of these things I would defer to the EPD. I'm not sure how this letter that we've just received is supposed to affect our decision today because it sounds like there is still some rulings on the EPD side that have yet been made that might affect how we vote or what kind of I don't see how contingencies we right. need. And I don't think they would have any effect on your deliberations. It's really there as an informational item. Um, most of this revolves around whether or not the building is required of the transfer site. He has decided he's going to do it anyway as already draw up the plans. Um, he wanted to reinforce that, you can make that a condition of your approval. Because that was my major concern. And what it, I mean, as I read the email from EPD, it sounds like they you know, sort of made up their mind, but not completely, about whether it's actually required. They just want it covered somehow. I think they're trying to define what that means. But if he goes ahead and builds a building around it, and as long as EPD, you know, blesses the design of that building, even so if it's not required by EPD, it would be over and above what the minimum requirements might be. So this building would have naturally a top for rain, but it could also be um, enclosed this transfer area three sides. Three or two sides. I think what he's proposing is two sides. The original call was like a pole barn just to put a roof over it, um, but what he's proposing is basically a two minute car board. Remember, there's trucks coming in and out on, on the two ends. So it would be a roof and then walls down the two sides, but there would be some separation from the walls to the actual well. But it would be open at both ends so the trucks can come in and out. And, you know, a sufficient overhang and so forth. I mean, there's no point in building that if you have it so tight that the wind's going to blow the rain in anyway. Any other questions for staff? Um, is there anyone in here in favor that would like to speak, anyone here would like to speak in favor of this application? Let's come to the left hand. I think Matt said most of it. I'm sorry. I'm curious for her. Maybe if any of y'all had any questions for us. We've been in business uh, 
over six years. We haven't had any public complaints. I've been in a lot of trouble since my life, but no public complaints. Uh, I wish it was like the old days, you know, if you had a problem with your neighbor, go see them. Uh, you're welcome over there anytime. Mr. Turner, come look at my place. Be glad to let anybody come look at it. I live here. I was born and raised here. I will not do anything to hurt anybody. Uh, I thought cropping back in the Marine Corps was tough. This has been tough. But to answer the questions of Mrs. Hoppy about the, the building, yes, it will be fully enclosed. I went ahead. I had to. I didn't get here early enough with them. They just finished our plans. I'm going to purchase permits if they're still open. I'm going to go ahead and build this. It's basically going to be a 106 foot long tub because you're going to have open the weekends because the truck's back here. Uh, that is a concrete structure. Uh, especially with this rain we had Sunday, I spent a lot of money having it, and I've got receipts. Uh, Mr. Matt seen them. I have a company that comes and pumps the water out. Because normally during the dry season, most water we pumped out of us when we pressure washed it. Because our trucks will have some moisture in them, more so when it rains, and then we pressure wash that thing once a week. And then we pump the water out into the tank. But I've seen already, this is going to cost me a little money to do, but I've seen already it's beneficial to us to have it out of the rain because we're out there working at it when it rains sometimes. And when you have your March and April winds for it, you know, just have it covered up. That kind of hides what it is. It is garbage. You know, uh, somebody's got to pick it up. Uh, I don't, anybody that comes on our place, you see it, it stays clean. It's a family run operation. You know, we have other employees. Me, my wife, two sons, and my daughter. Uh, don't have any other questions. I have one. Would trash be stored on the uh, property? No, we don't have no, a trouble no. for We don't have any garbage on the truck. Okay. Uh, don't get me wrong. You, know, you may have a piece fall out during the truck transition, but we're, it falls down in that way when we pick it up. Okay. Uh, it's nothing. That's why I have it. It does pack into the truck. And I like it. And if it got so big, more than 10 trucks, some of you are asking if it won't get 10 trucks. Before it does that, I would have to be in another county, and I would want to build one over there. Because Lowndes County is not going to support that many trucks for two operators here. And someone said something, why would I haul trash out of the county and have a landfill here? I think most of you know. Competition on this landfill. So. Thank you. Any, any other questions? I, I just have one question. Um, Carrie, the large truck that's like an onion, how many of those do you, do you like have? Onion. Yeah, the it's like onion. The oh, the big trailer. Oh, the big trailer. I just have one. The transfer trailer? You have one. I just have one of those. Okay. And so that sits empty on the property overnight? Uh, it does fill up that evening when the trucks get in. We pull it to the side of the property, 6 a.m. at least. Trash on it, ready to go. Yeah. The driver comes to Thomasville, comes yeah. back, and then it's it's filled up. It's ready to load again in the next city. Um, it looks like you take yard debris on site. Uh, yes, I'm. Uh, thank you for bringing that up, Mr. McCall. That was something I didn't know. The EPD come Wednesday, and they did. He said he's not writing me up anything you see in the letter about the only. He told me about the yard debris that you have to get rid of seventy five percent of it in a calendar year's time. But well, once he told me that, I said, I'm gonna get rid of all of it now, and we'll start over. It's gone. Okay. We ground up 840 cubic yards, we ground up money, and it's gone. How often do you usually haul it off? Is it once a well, year? Well, this was really the first time I've done it. I've had that for over a year okay. there. And we were going to grind it, and uh, Lanedale, they, they were the ones to come and grind it. Derek Gibbs, uh, he runs the grinding crew. They were supposed to do it before the end of the year, inclement weather, machine breakdowns. So he got there and he was able to do it. And we hauled it somewhere they're making potting soil out of it instead of burning it. That's it. Any, any other questions? Thank you, sir. Um, any, anybody in opposition or questions would like to come and speak? Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Warren Turner. I live at 2416 South 40 Road, Valdosta, Georgia. And, and I, I quote someone who's a lot more quotable than I. I'm going to 
you the rest of the story. Because what you've been told here today is really not accurate. And it, 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 it concerns me that this process is being presented in the manner that it is. So let's get back to the real nut of this thing. And I went before the Planning Commission last week and um, the recommendation was to approve the um, conditional use. Okay, so we have a conditional use, we have a variance, and we have a zoning. What came out at the Planning Commission meeting that Mr. Martin apparently didn't know, and the Planning Commission didn't know. And Mr. Scarborough, I will, I'm not addressing Mr. Scarborough, but he said when neighbors used to contact neighbors, I talked to Rob Plum, his attorney, he's a neighbor of mine. I talked to Bill Holland, who owns the property, who's one of my dearest friends in the world, and I'm not opposing the zoning. Our property is back over here, and over here. And we've had it in our family since the 50s. It was the Biological Livestock Company and our family's, my father's veterinary company. Um, but Deep South rented this property over two years ago, according to Mr. Starberg at the Planning Commission meeting. He did not contact EPD. He did not contact the city. He did not contact the county, and he started doing what he deemed appropriate on that property. My understanding is from Mr. Martin, and I certainly have no reason to disbelieve what Mr. Martin says, in July, it came up during a business permit discussion that this property was number one zone recreation, supposed to be a park, Number two, that they've been using it as a transfer station. And number three, there was nothing on this property except for the original buildings and old rebar and old concrete from the old, uh, uh, they don't call it pipe, I mean, big, you know, concrete pipes. So they started getting around and finding out what they were going to do in November 2017. My understanding is the pit was put in. They got a, hold, a water holding tank the size of a hot tub. And uh, I didn't grow up in, in solid waste, but I grew up in the livestock barn, and I know what it is when you back a trailer in the ground that's level to drive something in and out of it. And that's what they got, long enough for a tractor trailer to pull down in there. You could put in 14 lap pulls in, in the thing. It could fill up with water that much. So, the EPD, you keep hearing, the EPD approved this. The EPD said everything's great. The EPD got a one-page electronic application in November. And they approved it, and there is no plan, because I spoke with Nicole Dyer. If you look in your packet, she's a young lady recently moved down from Maine who works for the EPD, and they said they don't go to the site and look at these things unless a complaint is made. And at that point, I said, I'm not making a complaint. I'm making an inquiry. I'd like for somebody to look at it because y'all saw the photograph. If y'all want to pull it back up, this was last week, two days after it rained, and it had rain in the pit, uh, water in the pit. So you got, you got trash trucks pulling down in there and pulling out there and pulling all that, uh, you know, with water on the tires and on the undercarriage of the tractor trailer. So I said, let's look into it. They came in. I got a call Wednesday afternoon from the EPD office over in Albany. They said, we got people coming in town. Called Mr. Martin and said, Mr. Martin, my understanding is they're going to send a couple of EPD guys over there and let them look at it on Thursday. And the EPD folks said, we will call you Friday and let you know what's going on. Well, I haven't heard anything from the EPD. But what y'all heard from the EPD is that there are two issues on this property. 
840 cubic yards. I can tell you it was big enough that if you put my house behind it, you couldn't see my house. And they say they're not sure of the net that they're, they've been called on this roof. Now they're going to put a big structure over it. They've been over there for two years in violation of zoning, violation with no conditional use, and no variance. So the planning commission said, well, let's table this and let's find out where we are. Let's see what the zoning does and see what's going on. That wasn't mentioned today. That, that, that really bothers me that that wasn't. Y'all need to know the whole story. Y'all make any decision y'all deem appropriate. I respect this August body and whatever decision y'all make is y'all's decision. But you need to be provided the information to base the decision. It was tabled. So now they're asking y'all to give a variance on a conditional use that's been tabled on a zoning that hadn't been voted on. I don't know about you, but if that's not putting the car before the horse, I don't know what the definition of that is. If they would get the bugs in, in, in two years, without doing anything to comply with the law. And they're still doing it. They're doing it today. They did it yesterday. They did it the day before. I just, I don't get that. I felt all this sorry for this young man who put up a, a thing in his backyard and I, I, I applaud y'all for the decision that y'all made on that. But that's not the same thing. I just want to go through a, 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 a few of the things. They say that there's, there's one truck on site. And y'all can stop me and tell me when my time's up. If there's one truck, there's, there were three tractor trailers on site the day before the planning commission meeting. Three. I drove out there and looked at it. There were three. Two of them with tractors on them, one trailer without a tractor on them. If they got ten trucks, they say that it'll hold three dump trucks per tractor trailer. That's 3.3. So you're still going to have trash sitting over there all night. And they keep, they, 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 the, the answer to the questions y'all are asking are not being given as directly as I would feel comfortable with. Is there trash parked up there, left up there overnight? The answer is it's not on the ground. That doesn't mean it's not sitting in an open dump truck. That doesn't mean it's not in a trailer. That doesn't mean anything except that, in their opinion, it's not on the ground. Um, I'm requesting that y'all table it till the zoning is done. If the zoning is done, then they can go back through and, and, and determine what's appropriate variance and conditional use based on EPD um, uh, input. Um, we keep talking about this is not a conventional transfer station. And I think Ms. Farber referred to perfectly. Trash is trash. Trash is dirt. Okay? They're picking up trash in the county. This is not city trash. This is not y'all's trash in the city. This is not my trash in the city. They're bringing it in from the county. They're changing it over in whatever method that they use on city property, and then they're hauling it to Thomasville. You'll see a letter in your packet from Evergreen, the people who own the dump. I don't know who those people are. Mr. Edwards uh, contacted me. And I told him I didn't have anything to do with that. And um, I will stand in my place and tell you, he told me this, I don't know if it's true. They charge Deep South the same thing they charge themselves and the same thing they charge everything else to dump, uh, dump where the city gets tipping fees at the local dump. Um, so I don't know why it's being moved out in the front of the city of the, of the tipping fees. But again, that's not, that's not my fault. All I ask from the get-go is let's find out whether everything that's seen, that's, this is the, the, the trash, the debris pile, the yard, yard debris. That's what that is. You can tell how tall it is compared to everything else. There are no fences around there on the industrial boulevard side of that. It's an old torn down fence that belongs to the I thought Bill Holland did buy that front portion of it. If that's not true, I'm, I'm, I'm mistaken and staying corrected. Uh, but you can see straight in on it from the industrial boulevard. Um, they used to go 
go in and out of Tucker Road. That's what that did. We rented all that property all the way to the Pepsi plant and ran cows on it when I was growing up. Um, but uh, now they're coming out because it's easier for you know whatever better roads, whatever that is, the logistics of it, I'm not overly concerned with. I trust the city engineers and planners to, to make that determination. All I'm asking for y'all to get this, I mean, or not y'all to get this, for y'all to consider tabling this so we can put this in the appropriate order. Um, this is more confusing than putting an IKEA piece of furniture together. And if you don't start at step A, you dang sure ain't going to end up with a bookcase, and that's what you're about to do. And that's my concern. This has not been done appropriately the entire time. And I'm simply asking it to be tabled. The zoning decision will be made. My understanding is Thursday at the city council meeting. Apparently, the city's going to let them keep doing whatever they're doing out there until Hades freezes over or a variance in the conditional use is granted. Um, that's what I'm asking y'all to do. I'll be glad to answer any questions. I will tell you that my land is lower, so anything that does come off that property that is a pollutant goes straight onto my property. And whether that's happening or not, I don't know. But I think we need to, to decide, and, and that doesn't have a bill around the sides of that thing. And we're not talking about surgical precision when it comes to dumping one trash truck into another. I'll shut up if there's any questions. I'll be glad to attempt to answer them. Yes, ma'am. There is a body of water that I believe is to the east of the railroad is it a creek? Yes, ma'am. Well, we used to talk about Creek. All right, that is mud, that goes to Mud Swamp? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Down there, a little further south on the 41, where old 41 cuts in. Right, right. Okay. It essentially um, parallels the railroad track southward. Right. Mud creek. Where does it start? Uh, over around Whiteville Company, it goes underground somewhere Duke there. State Canal. Where? Duke State Canal feeds into it. It's, um, the area south of Savannah Avenue we, we gave the city of, I wish you could see it, over here. There's also a big retention pond, wastewater retention pond over here. And that was being treated and piped down to the creek. Well, with the issues that came up in the, with wastewater and, and, you know, and that kind of stuff, they decided to abandon the main easement for us and then do another sewer and water treatment line down closer to the creek because they needed a little like turnaround like an elbow i don't know what the joint system is on what it was i worked with tim tanner and coleman tally and you know we we get allowed them to come across the property to clean up that creek that has been a, a problem with pollutants over the years and there's a gate right there you can see it right before you get to 41 to the right i think yes ma'am it's, right a, there it's that a cable goes down to where the county did their or the city did their work. right 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 that's our that's our property we go all the way to 41 over there but just a little tip where the mirror gas big tank is right in there um we were there when they put in industrial boulevard as was the the site for the that we're talking about. But they are planning to rezone. Just so y'all, again, just so you know, we're not opposing this all the way back to here, the whole 10 acres. And my concern, if we don't do this the right, if we do it at all, we don't do it the right way, then the variances and conditional uses would be 10 acres worth of trash dump out there instead of five. Questions? Thank you. Um, since there's no one else here possibly to speak, um, were there any was there any contact to offices regarding the application? The only contact has been from Mr. Kerr. Okay. All right. Does anybody else have any questions? Any other discussion? I got a question. I don't know if I'm out of order to ask Matt, but I'll just pose it to all y'all. Maybe you can answer it for me. What would be the effect of us? approving this variance request and the rezoning or conditional use permit application being denied? Nothing. Nothing? Well, yeah, it would, it would be a point. 
um, they have to have the rezoning for any of this to take effect. So the property has to be rezoned in order for him to continue out. Correct. If without the rezoning, it's not eligible for conditional use. And the use is what's triggering the variances, and the use is not allowed in the zone. Um, Which was And I did not mention, my apologies, Mr. Turner, but it is a repackage. There is code enforcement action pending on the outcome of these applications. And if you know, things do not get approved, then the code enforcement will trigger. You will have to answer to this before judge and cease operations, et cetera. Um, and that's where we stand. So we have a lot of eyeballs watching this. Well, I've got to admit, I've been sitting there the whole time thinking, why is it being done in this order? It it's, seemed like to me that it's out of order. I've thought that the whole time. Right, it's been three applications were submitted simultaneously. So if we're allowed to review them, what's the different issue? What you're looking at is in conditional use of rezoning is a completely different topic. It's not under your purview. It's not the subject of this public hearing. But you're looking at the supplemental standards for solid waste transfer facility. And he's seeking relief from those standards as described in the package. The conditional use is twofold. It's for the solid waste hauling operation and the transfer facility, two different items that require conditional use in M2 zone. And the rezoning is for the whole property, not just the southern half. <clears throat> really, really. So, in terms of the order of events, at least with city council, they need to act on the rezoning first, and that's listed first on their agenda. And if that gets defeated, then the rest of it doesn't happen because the property is no longer held. And our that's decision would be moved if it's defeated as well. Correct. All it is is to help speed up these processes. So we resolve the situation one way or the other without delay. So we're able to separate the items, but to process them in the same way. So even if you approve variances and the conditional use order is only fail, then that's the end of it. Could I say something? Sorry. If, if, if we table, use passes, he, he can still stay in the operation until it comes back up before us. The code enforcement action is pending the outcome of these three applications. If they are still active, then it gets delayed in the court system. Okay. And I need all three pieces to be approved. If all three pieces are approved, I can sign them. Correct. The business license is pending, and that's when we learned about it was back last summer when the business license application came in. The way I understand it, this is not a new business. He was operating in Lowndes County for a pretty big period of time at a site in Lowndes County. Um, he started parking his trucks here. I think that's when the lease started a couple of years ago. He had a county business license for his site in Lowndes County. That expired May 31st of last year. He tried to renew, but since his office and operation had not been moved to this site, the county would not renew his business license. Therefore, he applied for a city business license. The owner of this property, and I believe him when he says this, led him to believe that the property was already zoned industrial, it would be fine. Because once we saw the business license application, we raised these questions with the landowner. First of all, landowner was very surprised and not believing that this was ER instead of M2. And we had to go back through the zoning maps and prove that this was not a mapping error. This is actually ER and hence the history of how that ER got there. All of that started in the summer. And it triggered a process back then, which you all were not aware of, but it had to go through the Planning Commission and City Council for a huge development map amendment first to get that ER area eligible for industrial zoning. But that was a change not just for this property, but for that whole stretch of land between Tucker and Hill Harbor and Madison and Patterson. That was a separate action. And that had to take place first. That was approved last fall. Who owns this property? It is Edward Jennings LLC. And I think the managing member of that is Bill Hall. Bill Hall. Bill Hall Jr. We've been dealing with Kevin Haas as the representative of the owner. And you see his name, his letters in here. So he's been our contact person. Well, I'm like, man, I think the county may have solved that front page because there's not a little sign. Well, 
my own account, and that's where I've ever heard of that, but you see the parcel map that's here in order to sell that property, you know, if it was done by the warranty deed, and then a law was broken in doing that, I can tell you there's been no subdivision plan submitted, let alone to prove that we can figure those property lines or anywhere near. And I would be the one, one of three people to sign off on that, and there has been no plan. Um, sometimes people sell stuff by deed, Carmel um, and I can test the 25 years of history of dealing with that. Um, it is illegal under local ordinances. And if someone were to try to report a plant without the local government approval, or the reports will not accept the plant. In years past, they would under a provision in the statutes to say law, but that provision has changed. And so it requires our seal and our signatures and so forth in order to report a plant. If they try to go around that process and they go around the local law, in my view, that's an illegal act. And I would like to thank a landowner or attorney to be aware of that. Yeah. Um, it, any other, just real quick, any other questions of staff? Anyone else? Thank you. Um, but one more comment on the real estate side. My guess is I haven't noticed a sign out there. Um, but then sometimes I ignore signs. You know, sometimes you just too many of them. But my guess is if it's trying to market property that does not touch Gil Harbin, that is visible from Gil Harbin, then maybe you put a sign up there. I would like to think it is not in the public right of way. It is actually on the county's property. And therefore, I would like to think that he has the county's permission to put that sign there. I don't know if he does or not. Carmel may be checking on this soon. <laughs> Well, I'm going to see if I can. It's not in the right way. It sits back on the Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Any other questions? Do we have a motion? Because there is no harm in, uh, if it's denied at the city, this won't matter, um, to follow staff recommendation and approve the variance as presented with the all four conditions. All four conditions. Um, does that include the fence, too? No, you want to not, you want to make a fence? Absolutely. Okay. And you mentioned 10 trucks, and I didn't see what, uh, 10 trucks is in the conditional. Right. Okay. I'm trying to keep the use issues apart from the supplemental standard. Okay. Okay, so you want to, um, okay, I'm going to make number three go away. With conditions one, two, and four. So they don't get the tree, they don't get the one on the trees. Okay. So without number three, and that also then the they have to comply with. Um, they have to comply criteria with criteria or number, number six. Six. Right. To make the fence be correct. All right. So that if that's amended as a motion, then it would be approval of all the variances that are requested with the exception of number six and subject to conditions one, two, and four. Correct. What did you say about the trial? It's not a part of ours, it's a part of conditional use. You can put that in yours, but I don't see the logic. Well, and, and uh, you know, I would also say um, for this uh, business only, so like not another truck hauler, not some other garbage man, this garbage man. That's in number one. Okay, so this garbage man only, and uh, I'm going to say the one in 10 trucks. What kind of trucks? Garbage trucks. On the truck, truck garbage trucks. trucks. No, no, they're they're different. Different. I know that. Do, do, do you want to have a total of 10 trucks? Or 10 garbage trucks and three tractor trailers? I think that that goes with conditional use. It's not part of ours. We're talking about variances, <coughs> specific. There's a list of things here. And, and trucks isn't on them. It says you have to take care of your water and you can't do all of these things. So we're just looking at these uh, 17 things, which uh, Mr. Scarborough says is going to be in compliance of uh, all but four, and I want them to be all but three. Well, um, all, all the five. There are six items on this list that are seeking some kind of variance approval. Okay, not, okay, 
Okay, but not number six. Not number six. The items, and I highlighted in my comment that it's items number four, five, and seven, nine, and twelve. Number twelve is listed as compliance, but the exception. By virtue of the condition of approval on the cover page, city engineer has the discretion of whether things get paid. Right. Right. That's my motion. <laughs> we have a motion by Ms. Portman. Do we have a second? I uh, second the motion. We have a second. All those in favor? Four, five. All those against? One. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Uh, meeting minutes. Everybody have a chance to review the meeting minutes. I did find the same, which is why y'all have any copies in front of you. The only mistake that I found, I used November templates. I forgot to take the November date and change it to. So that is the only thing that I've been copying. Anything else? We have a motion to accept the meeting minutes. Okay, we have a motion to second. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Any other business? Okay. You got to say they could look good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's what Alan would say. Yes. Take a look at it. Yeah. Thank you all. Uh, we're adjourned. Thank you.